we will discuss delirium in this video. And delirium is a condition that can occur acutely. It's a temporary condition, transient, and it's essentially something that happens in elderly patients in which they have a disturbance in their mental status. So a typical scenario is an elderly patient um, is placed in a hospital for something and then all of a sudden they develop this acute change in mental status. So after a surgery usually um, or any type of uh, condition and I'll talk a little bit about that but I just want you to picture it. There's an uh, elderly person who's been admitted to the hospital, something's happened and then all of a sudden there's a change in mental status. Delirium is also sometimes known as acute confusional state. And this is a little bit more of a descriptive term. So let's talk a little bit about cause. What is the reason this is happening? Well, it's a long list, but I'll try to break it down into some of the most important. One of the reasons that can happen is medications, in particular polypharmacy. An elderly patient that's on a lot of medications, it can uh, lead to delirium. In particular, there's one type of medication that tends to be sort of the champion, that's anticholinergics. Another reason is a dehydration. Any kind of volume depletion can cause uh, uh, an acute uh, confusional state. Infection, definitely many types of infection can lead to delirium. Anesthesia. So that's why a lot of these clinical vignettes, you'll see a patient in a post-op setting, post-operative setting, a surgery has occurred and then after the surgery. And then another thing you'll see is intensive care unit patients uh, are often uh, associated with delirium. Now, the pathophysiology of delirium is not perfectly understood, but however, there is an established relation between stress and delirium, any kind of physio physiological or psychological stress. And anytime that happens, there's an increased sympathetic nervous system activity. And that, essentially, are the ingredients that lead to the impairment of brain activity. So any kind of stress uh, that uh, uh, is imposed upon the patient, either psychological or physiological. So here we go with the symptoms. Now the symptoms is a long list, but I'll try to break it down into about five that you can kind of understand uh, in, in the sense of being able to detect on a clinical vignette. The first one is inattention. And what I mean by that is the, the patient has difficulty focusing as they once could prior to the delirium kicking in. The next one is being disoriented. So they're not sure what time it is or what day it is. They're not sure where they are. They're not sure who's speaking to them. So disorientation. Another one is agitation. This is a, a problematic, especially for the nurses or the staff. The person can become agitated and even combative. Uh, being confused, and that was, of course, part of the alternative name for delirium, acute confusional state. And then being disorganized in their thinking. And there's one more I, I wanted to put in here that has to do with speech. Their speech is also uh, disordered. Oftentimes it's incoherent. So I hope you can kind of get a, a picture uh, of what the patient will present with uh, in a hospital setting, usually in the ICU after some sort of infection or surgery, and the patient is almost always uh, elderly. So how do you diagnose this? 
Well, interestingly, it's entirely based on history and physical exam, and then also a mental status exam. You're not doing any expensive tests. So the history really has to do with figuring out what is the baseline mental status of this patient before this kicked in. Were they um, normal or were, was there something that you can compare to? And that can be done by asking the family members. Another thing that's important is check the medications. What kind of meds are they on? That will be an important uh, clue. Physical exam, basically you're checking for signs of infection, hydration status, any of the things uh, that uh, are part of the uh, etiology of delirium. And then mental status exam, you know, you're looking, looking for um, basically is the patient uh, have inattention? Uh, is the patient have a decreased level of consciousness? You know, the mental status exams can definitely check all these things. disorganized thinking basically you 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 talk to the patient you know you try to figure out are they able to think properly or is the level of consciousness uh, appropriate do they have proper attention are they uh, alert to time place or person and this can be done s simply by asking questions so diagnosis involves just history physical and a mental status exam. There's no diagnostic testing that is necessary. So how do you treat this? Well the first thing of course is you want to correct the cause. What was the cause of the delirium? And was it an infection? Was the person uh, dehydrated? Uh, was the person being uh, uh, overdosed on certain medications? And if so you know, DC those meds, hydrate the patient, uh, treat the infection. So you're looking at correction of cause. In the more acute state, of course, you want to manage the patient's agitation. And the agitation can be managed by giving a, uh, usually an IM shot of uh, haloperidol, which is an antipsychotic medication. And this helps to lessen some of the symptoms such as being combative or being extremely agitated. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes and see what this looks like in a patient presentation. A previously healthy 73 year old male is admitted to the ICU after an emergency appendectomy. He does well until the evening when he suddenly appears confused. His speech is rambling and incoherent and he is disoriented to person, place, and time. His wife says he was sleepy but otherwise acting normal two hours ago. On exam, he has normal vital signs and no fever. Other than the cognitive changes and some mild periincisional tenderness, the examination is normal. Serum electrolytes, a CBC, ABG, and a routine chem panel are normal. Most likely cause for his altered sensorium is. What's well, the classic clinical vignette? You have an elderly patient. Uh, he's gone through a surgery. And now he's in the uh, ICU. And he's now all of a sudden disoriented. His uh, speech is uh, disordered. And um, they're asking why. And it's a classic case of delirium. Next question. 74 year old man is admitted to the hospital for radiation treatment for malignant melanoma of the eye and was diagnosed seven months ago. Treatment is performed early in the day and you are called to see him late at night because of sudden deterioration in his mental status. When you arrive he does not recognize you even though you have been taking care of him for many years. He repeatedly asks where he is. His speech pattern is disorganized and rambling. He is normally a highly functional elderly man who lives alone and volunteers at a local nursing home. His temperature is 98, blood pressure is 110, pulse is 70, respirations are 16. He is uncooperative, but a modified physical exam is unremarkable. 
mental status exam is not possible because he has an altered level of consciousness. Lab studies show no, no abnormalities. The most likely explanation for his symptoms is. Well, this is delirium. And there's enough clues in the, in the question uh, stem that uh, point to that. Now, there's a lot of psychiatric uh, disorders that they kind of try to confuse you with, like putting it in the answer choices. But because this happened suddenly, it's not dementia. He lives alone and he has highly functional uh, status. So saying that he already had a low level of dementia, uh, that's not correct. Um, some of these are psychiatric disorders like delusional disorder, adjustment disorder, and they're not really uh, what's happening here. There's more than enough evidence that this is delirium. And again, they try to uh, confuse you by putting in psychotic disorder. What he has is delirium, and another uh, name for delirium is acute confusional state. And they give you that actually in choice E from the psychological and physical stress of this hospital experience. And then finally, a 78-year-old woman with no past psychiatric history is admitted to the inpatient geriatric floor with urosepsis. Prior to hospitalization, she lived in a community by herself and was able to tend to her own cooking, cleaning, and shopping. On the second night in the hospital, the nursing staff alerts you that the patient is extremely agitated and competitive. She had pulled out her IV lines and appears to be speaking to people who are not in the hospital room. After placing her in soft restraints, the most appropriate pharmacologic treatment for behavioral management of this patient may include. Well, she had an infection and she's an elderly patient and now she's exhibiting the agitation and the combativeness that can occur in delirium and to manage or lessen the symptoms you would use haloperidol and haloperidol can be given either PO or IM or IV usually you know given as an IM shot in an acute setting so that would be choice D